Since the dawn of time, man has been curious. And for almost as long, the Vibes Broadcast Network has sought the truth. Investigate. Discuss. Explore. Okay. Maybe in other episodes, but this one is just... Listen to the Vibes. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. Well, welcome everyone to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. I have brought back Miss Michelle Shallon on my show. Uh, we'd gotten to talking about uh, psilocybin, and if you're not familiar with that term, it has to deal with uh, with ma- magic mushrooms and the not only mental but the physical benefits to it. I've always kind of looked towards alternative ways of, of dealing with such things as depression and anxiety, PTSD, you know, having all these and people just shove pills down your throat all the time and they weren't really doing the job. And one of the side effects it warns you about on some of these medicines is may cause depression or thoughts of suicide. I'm like, isn't that what I'm supposed to be defeating here? <laughs> and, uh, and so once again, I've been into meditations and things like that, but there, you know, there's still things that I could do to, to help myself. And being that I have a lot of physical ailments, um, I'm kind of looking into the benefits of that as well. And so Michelle's, got a lot more experience or or knowledge about these things than I do. And I thought we could continue that conversation and hopefully can help someone out there. So Michelle, how are you today? Really good. How are you doing? Um, You know, after I told you last week, uh, we, we had a rough week, a death in the family, grandson breaking his arm and then getting sick and all these things had to cut our, our visitation short when I was visiting the family and I really miss my grandkids down there, but, um, things are turning around. I loved your video. Oh, thank you. Beautiful. Grandma was special, special woman. And, uh, she was, she was tiny, but, um, a tough lady, man. (laughs) She was tough. (laughs) She was a powerhouse. Yeah. As she was. And, and, uh, I just hope that I can at least make her proud in, in, in the smallest bit of just me. So, I mean, I'm, you know, we're just getting to know each other and I'm, you know, I, I'm getting to know you as a person and you're a great soul and you're helping a lot of people just doing this. You. You no, know, just this one thing that you're doing that try to help people in the podcast and stuff. She would be very proud. Yeah. For well, sure. thank you for that. Um, you know, there's, we've talked about this before, how much negativity is out in the world. And it seems like politics are all that's on people's mind, you know, the racism, this, that, and the other, and the the media politicians, and I don't care which side of the aisle you're on, all politicians seem to do this. They try to find a way to divide us. And I feel like we should come together. And when you, when you fall into that trap, Mm -hmm. the us and the them, then the people in power have more control. That's the, that's the checklist, you know, that's how they do it. So, we, you know, and we, we both live in the same area yeah. and I, I'm pretty sure you, you run across this as well. When you meet anybody in the store, whether you know them or not, and no matter what their background might be, or even the scope, color of their skin, you don't run across any animosity, do you? No, no I don't either. No, I mean, if you avoid, if you bring up certain conversation, it might be there, you know, people get excited pretty quick, but if you kind of avoid that subject, not a problem, you know what I mean? Mm. But I have, you know, had some conversations and I have different thoughts, thoughts than some people around here. So they got pretty excited pretty quick. And I was like, okay, we're just not going (laughs) to, you know, like I'm talking about, because when I was living in Spain, um, we could be, we could agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. We could talk about things, you know, not just Spanish people, but just a lot of different, when I lived in Valencia, there was, I, I talked to people from different countries all the time on a daily, on a regular basis as part of my life. And, 
And so, you know, all these other countries watch America because America is so big and what happens to us affects them. And so they're much more knowledgeable about world politics than Americans are. And um, so, you know, we could talk about things and if we had differences, we could agree to disagree and move on to a different subject. Unfortunately, because there's been so much stress here for, you know, years now, um, it's just this kind of boiling point and the people here, they're excited and they're stressed and they have a harder time doing that. So, well, you pile on the lockdowns and mandates I, and I, you know, I, it's no wonder people are, are kind of losing their minds at this yeah. point. And that's the, the reason why I, I really got into this show was so that, you know, let people know there's like-minded people out here that we're, we're trying to get the same goals and, and we can help each other. And, and, you know, the, and that there's alternative ways of thinking about certain things like health. And right. And then and then the other problem that has happened a lot and more so now since, you know, 2020 is more and more people are in front of screens regularly. Yes. And um, and they're more connected to the Internet and devices and getting way too much information that they can't do anything about. And mm-hmm. a lot of it's negative. And, you know, it's not only is the input not good but i can share things with you uh articles and stuff where all kinds of research has been going on with highly technical imaging devices to see the brain and basically what happens when we're so connected to these devices just even if it's just social maybe it's not negative it's Mm -hmm. just in our brains like this it's totally unnatural for our brains and what happens is our brain actually, we, we, it produces dopamine. It's like a dopamine overload, okay? Right. If you're just scrolling through Instagram, Facebook, whatever, video games, whatever, okay? It's dopamine overload. And what happens in the brain is the brain goes, oh, we got too much dopamine here. We got to level it out. And so it produces anxiety and depression to level it out mm-hmm. because you're too connected with all these devices. and it's a dopamine overload. It's incredible. There's a, I mean, I've studied it for a while, but I read a, a really good article recently and it was a therapist writing this article and it was about this client that he had, an adult, a young adult man that was addicted to video gaming and he, got, he had so much anxiety and so much depression. He was debilitated. He couldn't work. He moved back to his parents' house and he came to this guy and he said, now, previously, before we understood what was happening with the dopamine, Uh, with these devices, I would have just gave him a pill. But now I know, and he prescribed something different. The guy wasn't working, so he could do this. He said, stay off the screens for a whole month so your brain can regulate itself. And then slowly introduce this and only do certain ways, certain times, like that kind of thing. He didn't take it away from him, but he said, you know, you can introduce it, but do it this way. And it was more guidelines around it. Mm -hmm. And um, instead of playing with strangers, just play with your friends, you know, certain things like this. So only this much, this many hours a week, that kind of thing. And the, and the guy got a lot better with no medication whatsoever, just making changes like that. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. There's actual term they use now. I made a video on it on my YouTube channel. It's called social prescribing. And, uh, it's not quite taken on yet here, but it's already gotten popular in the UK. And it's basically a, a different way of handling your patient. You know, the patient comes to the doctor and says, I'm really stressed out, blah, 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 blah. And the doctor says, okay, take these pills and see me in two weeks and let's see how you're doing. Um, instead, the doctor will say, what's going on? What's happening in your life? How's your relationship? Are you watching too much news? What's your morning routine? What's your, what's your nighttime routine? What, do you go out to nature? Do you exercise? You know, ask all the things that could cause these problems. Okay. Mm-hmm. What are your habits? And then they'll do social prescribing and say, do this, do this, don't do this, get to nature. You need to exercise a little bit more, stay off your phone. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. And, um, and you know, that's a healthier, holistic way. And you're looking at the causes of what these you know, causing these, these symptoms rather than just trying to medicate the symptom, mm-hmm. bury the symptom. Okay. Because it's not going away. It's just going to make it worse. And that's why a lot of these medications aren't working for people anymore 
or like you said, they have w- worse side effects than the actual symptoms. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, and don't get me wrong. There's a lot of medicines out there that are very yeah. beneficial. I mean, being diabetic, uh, I, I used to rely on insulin and there was other, uh, there, there was one pill I would take that would drop my sugar real quickly and then others that would regulate it. But what benefited me more than anything was I, um, I, I ate better. I changed the, my eating habits up, you know, got away from all those sugars and starches and, and the carbs and all those things. And not even real food, some of it, just faux food. Right. <laughs> it's just food, it's faux food. <laughs> you know, and then also having high blood pressure, high cholesterol, started eating more things like garlic and cinnamon, you know, lean meats, um, more uh, green vegetables, and it, it, it turned things around for me. Now, I don't use insulin. Uh, the other one that used to drop my, my sugar down, I don't need that. And I still take metformin, but I'm not taking as much as I used to. And, you know, just in just a short time that I kind of got off of my diet, everything raised up on me again. And now I'm back to, you know, eating right and watching my intake and that kind of thing. That's why I'm saying there's alternative ways of taking oh, care of these. So many alternative ways. There's so many modalities and then exercise and then meditation, yes. techniques, breath work, uh, uh, sound therapy. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's so much that I have used myself because I, my route, no criticism of anybody that needs medication and goes that route for a of little course while. Not. It's really open your mind. And there's a lot of things that will help you other than that. Okay. Or right additional to that, whatever you need. Okay. And um, yeah, so what we talked about before, um, one of those things for some people is using plant medicines. Mm -hmm. Um, And there is amazing amount of information, you know, I, that is online on YouTube on articles that is available. Now it's really quite mind blowing. Um, I only had my first experience four years ago. Mm -hmm. And after my first experience, because it was so profound for me, um, I investigated and learned a lot more about it and had more experiences and kept on researching, researching, researching. So I'm always looking at new stuff that's coming out. It's, 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 it's amazing. Um, and so, you know, so I'll discuss kind of what I've, I've learned, what, what my experience was and what I have learned. Um, and I can share some things recently. It, 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 it keeps on... The, the subject is opening up so much, it's on prime time TV now with all kinds of famous people and regular people talking about it, okay? Right. Um, and, you know, six months ago, that wasn't even happening, all right? Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's how much it's changed. I remember when I first started, you know, exper- experimenting with myself and researching it four years ago, I was in Spain, and I would try to talk to some people that, I hadn't talked to him about it before. You know, mm-hmm. that were, I had some mentors and people that knew more about it that I was getting help from. And then when I tried to share it with some friends, I remember it was some Spanish friends and some English friends and even American friends, it didn't matter. Um, they were like, <laughs> they were all freaked out, you know, because you know, we had this taboo since 1970 mm-hmm. when, when Nixon uh, lumped psychedelics in in the same status of heroin and cocaine and all this other stuff, which never should have happened. He did that for political reasons to gain control over the movement that was very, you know, LSD was a part of that experience. And that movement was contrary to his, his conservative right, of course. And he saw this huge generation, this generation, they were all going against and he was like, oh, we need to squash this. And so he, he took LSD and said, oh, it's horrible. And then they just went on this like major propaganda. Uh, and you can see it in documentaries that have been made, you know, footage and stuff like this. And you can even remember some of the stuff if you're older, where it's like, oh, if you do this, you're going to go insane. You'll go, you'll, you'll, you'll never come back and you'll destroy your brain. And it was like very intense stuff. And, um, and everyone believed it. It went all over the world, you know. But in fact, these substances have been used for thousands of years. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's in, with indigenous cultures that 
you know, going back to the Mayans and the Romans, I mean, and they used them for all kinds of re ways um, and they had a lot of respect for them. They didn't use them like the Western world, like, hey, let's party, you know, they didn't <laughs> use it like that. They used it to, because, because okay, yeah, there's nothing wrong with using it recreationally. The big problem is, is they're, they're, they're potent substances. Mm -hmm. And if you are not, you know, in a safe environment and with somebody that can watch over you, and if you're taking a high dose, yes, you're putting yourself in danger. Yes, you're not going to think you shouldn't be riding your bike or riding, you know, in a car or whatever. You know what I mean? I mean, you need to be in a safe environment and then you can get benefits from it. But you know, and these cultures did that, you know, they had the highest respect of them, the, the, the younger teenagers and stuff didn't go use them as recreational because they saw them as healing uh, physically, emotionally, spiritually, you know what I mean? This was like a rite of patch, passage and something that was really respected highly. So it's been used for a long, long time. Uh, just like yoga, you know what I mean? I mean, the Western world sees all the benefits from yoga and meditation now. They're just starting. I mean, yoga, they've known for a while now because yoga has been popular here in the States for, you know, 15, 20 years. Uh, mm -hmm. But I remember when it first started coming over to Texas, like 15 years ago, it was brand new. And uh, it just came over to Spain. They're behind us like probably eight years ago. And so meditation, we're ahead of it. And, you know, other countries are behind it. But the Eastern countries have been doing this for thousands of years. This is nothing new, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. the Western world, particularly the United States is so profit motivated uh, for the healthcare system that there's no money to be made <laughs> on this kind of thing. You know, the, uh, what I, I believe will happen for sure is uh, it's gonna start, they're gonna make some money on it because when, when the FDA approves psilocybin therapy, which they will, they've already made two announcements in 2020 that they were on a fast track to approve psilocybin therapy for depression and other ailments, brain trauma, stuff like that. Um, and they called it breakthrough therapy. So it's gonna happen. We're just all waiting for it to actually be approved. They're not gonna approve it recreationally. It may come someday, but it's more about therapeutic use, okay? Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, when that happens, things will open up. And then what will happen is the pharmaceutical industry, they're probably already working on a pill to be ready. And they're going to have their version of psilocybin, probably maybe other, you know, substances later, but psilocybin is the one that's really on the forefront of being approved for, you know, therapy. And okay, they'll say there's this higher quality and it'll be more expensive and stuff like that. But at least that's an improvement in my mind. At least that's an improvement then what a lot of these uh, medications that aren't working for people. Right. Uh, the, the beautiful thing about it also is um, it's non-addictive. It loses its, it's not like, you know, another kind of drug like cocaine or let's say tobacco even, you know, where you, or, or, or you're addicted, your body wants more and more, keeps on saying, give me more the next day, okay? Whereas psilocybin and these, some of these other substances if you do it repeatedly, it loses its like right away, boom, 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 repeatedly in or you know following days. I'm talking about okay. Right. If you have time between, then it still has the potency. But if you try to do it on a regular basis, you know, and maybe have a strong experience kind of thing, it's not going to work because it it just you you get a tolerance real quick, and that's one of the that's the big reason why it's not non addictive for people. So that's okay. a really great thing because a lot of prescription drugs are addictive too. Um, so what's happening, uh, uh, now, like I said, I, I can show you, uh, I'm not going to watch the whole video, but I'll show you a video I just saw. Um, and it was about this one man, I forget his name, how to pronounce his name, Cachillo, Cachillo, he's an Italian guy. He yeah. was, a, it's a video that I'm sending you. And, um, he was, a, a hockey player, Chicago Blackhawks. I'm from Chicago, Chicago Blackhawks, and he was a two-time World Cup champion mm -hmm. and he was on the top of his game. At the same time, he was severely damaged with his brain. He had seven concussions, I believe seven that were diagnosed, and he said he had way more than that. He was like, you know, hockey, they're always like fighting. He was like, oh, yeah. he was like a psycho, he said. He said it was a total psycho. He, they, he, they called him car bomb. So he was constantly getting, you know, concussions. And he didn't know, you know, the damage of it or anything until it happened. 
And his, he, he had brain trauma so severely that at 30 years old with a young, little, with a young family and a, you know, a, a, a beautiful wife, a beautiful family, had like three kids, he was contemplating suicide because he could not, all of, his short-term memory, his long, it was out the window. He was super irritable. He was super impulsive. Um, he was starting to slur his speech. He was super uh, sensitive to light. I mean, he had all these severe symptoms and he couldn't even function. And then of course he was super irritable, was causing all kinds of problems in his marriage. And he was contemplating suicide because he was trying everything, all this traditional stuff, no, special treatment, nothing was helping at all. And finally, like a last ditch effort, he went to Peru to do ayahuasca mm -hmm. and like reset his brain. And wow. he came back and started doing psilocybin therapy. And in this video that I'll, I'll just show you, you know, show you what it looks like and then I'll send it to you. Um, and I've shared it on my group. Um, it, it, it's Brian Gumbel uh, uh, interviewing him and a couple of other athletes as well. Okay, I think a football, uh, two uh, MMA um, boxer, whatever, wrestlers. You know, it's you got the football, you got not too many soccer players, but like the, the hardcore wrestling, um, mm. stuff like this. Anything is a like bomb, bomb, bomb. Okay. And, um, and these guys are all trying this. And so this guy actually, you know, had amazing results from it. He started his own company to help people with psilocybin therapy that have drain, brain trauma. Wow. And um, I don't know if you ever saw the movie. This is a recommended movie if you've ever seen it. Years ago during the, not the National Hockey League, but the National Football League, um, there was these, these, because of concussions, these high, you know, really famous players that were worth a lot of money to the owners were going insane. They were mm -hmm. just starting to lose their mind and they committed suicide. And there were several of them. So there's this movie called Concussion. It's probably about maybe eight years old or something like that. Uh, Will Smith plays yeah. the doctor. Have you ever seen it? Yes, I have. Really good. So remember, he was like, look it, this is what it is. They did the autopsies. He saw, he goes, this is what's happening to the players. And the, NF, the owners of the NFL didn't want the information out. They didn't care. They were like, we don't care. We're making money off these guys. You better shut up. Yeah, I mean, they were threatening them and, you know, threatening him and stuff like that, the doctor. And uh, finally, in the movie, it shows one of the, one of these players moved up in the ranks and became an owner, okay? And, but he had already had this damage to his brain and he was starting to get the same symptoms as these other guys. And he was like, he wrote a letter and he said, the doctor's right. This is happening to me. And he killed himself. And he wrote this letter saying, blah, 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 blah. And then finally, after that, it took a man higher up in the owner position, they took notice and they stopped. And so now it's common to where if you have a famous football player that's been, I forget the one guy's name that he was playing a long time and, and he's had, he had a bunch of concussions and they were like, you need to stop. You need to stop because uh, you could get really brain damage. And he, he did, he stopped when he was at the top of his career and just started doing the broadcasting instead. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now they're really, you know, really, it's really important. The, I don't know if you remember years ago, um, again, probably around the same time, maybe, uh, this man named Ben Wah, do you know who he, he was? He was like a really big star in Raw and F, uh, in, in the wrestling. Okay. The big okay. stars okay. in the wrestling, you know? Okay. okay. So a lot of that is like soap opera. Okay. Yes. And a lot of it's fake. The storylines are fake. They know who's going to win and all that kind of stuff, but they still take a beating. Okay. Mm -hmm. They still get a lot of hardcore hits. Okay. And this guy, uh, his name is uh, Benoit. He, his last name is Benoit. I forget his first name. He, um, he was a big star. He was in, uh, he was only 44 years old. He was um, a part of wrestling for over 20 years and big star in the, in the TV show. And Everybody loved him. His wife was involved, and then they had a kid. They had seven year old. Everybody loved him. Seven year old boy, and all of a sudden he started acting really weird. All right, he started like quoting out the Bible all the time, which he never did before. And everyone's like, "What's going on with you?" All right, and then one weekend he killed his wife, he killed his son, and he hung himself. Was that Chris Benoit? Chris Benoit. That was the first name. Chris Benoit. Remember, he was on the he was on the front of People magazine. It was yeah. Huge no no no. 
And when they, at first they were talking like it was steroids. No, it was trauma. He had all kinds of concussion. When they did the autopsy on his brain, they said his brain looked like an 80 year old man with Alzheimer's and he was only 44 years old. Wow. Insane. Just like these other guys did in the football. Okay. Super, super sad. So, so then when I was watching this video of this one, the hockey player was telling you about, apparently if you've had more than three concussions, I think he said more than three concussions, you in your lifetime, which I have, <laughs> uh, you have like an 80% chance more than an average person to develop dementia, Alzheimer's or Parkinson's in your lifetime. Wow. It's serious stuff. And it can cause huge change, you know, and just simple things like your, your, your kid falls down and hits his head on an accident, you know, in an accident, a bicycle, a bicycle accident or anything. And all of a sudden their, their behavior can change and all of a sudden they have bad behavior. <laughs> it could be that their brain has got damaged. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's really severe stuff. So, um, so anyway, there's so much now, so many people going to this, there's this big, you know, trend, you can see it online, you can see it on meetup, you can see it in Facebook groups all over the place. There's, you type in psychedelic therapy, and you will see pages and pages and pages of information. Now it's just blown up in the last year and a half. Um, and um, on video too, all over the place, TED Talks, all kinds of documentaries, uh, neuroscientists, medical doctors, people talking about their own experiences. A lot of athletes, like I said, go into this now that have had concussions and stuff. It's absolutely. Right. And uh, then a lot of people, a lot of the uh, therapeutic use is around people at the end of the life when they have terminal cancer or terminal disease and they're freaking out about dying. Uh, having an experience like that totally calms them and they're not afraid of dying anymore and they're, they're good. I mean, they're not going to be healed, but they're at peace. You know what I mean? So the remaining part of their life is much better. A lot of them talk about that. Uh, anxiety, depression, healing through trauma. Um, uh, I've used it in ways where, um, you know, healing from cultivating self, a much more profound, deeper self-love, forgiveness, um, you know, for trauma and stuff that I, I, I've experienced in my life. We all have. And, you know, some of it is a little dreamy-like. And then the other parts, you don't, it's not like, oh, you can't remember anything. There's always some part in the experience that will be profound and really train, you know, help change it. And I have not had a lot of talk therapy in my life, in my experience, some, but I've talked to other people and heard, you know, face to face and heard other people talk about their experiences with some of these, you know, experiences where they said it was worth that one strong experience was worth five to 10 years of therapy. That's what wow. That's what people said, because talk therapy, okay, it's helpful and you learn, but if you don't do anything else additional to that, you still have, you're not, you, you know, you still have subconscious beliefs that come from what happened to you, let's say, or, you know, messaging you got culturally or whatever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Talk therapy doesn't change that. Okay. Cause that's like imprinted in your, in your brain. You have to do other modalities and other things to change that you can but it takes time to do okay right. and plant medicine sometimes can get you something that you need to see right away something that oh gosh that really brought that to light for me i didn't even know that that was a thing for me or something that i or you know something that healed me somehow or that kind of thing okay and the when i first did it the thing that really was um, very big to me uh, that I know the biggest thing that just hooked me that I was like, wow, this is incredible. It was this amazing feeling of presence mm -hmm. and everything was interesting. Everything around me was interesting and I was present. Now, what does that sound to you? Like, it's like being a child present and the, everything's interesting, right? Right, right. It was this beautiful childlike feeling. And it was this feeling of, you know, just happiness and bliss and love. That was like the first time I tried it. Now, not every experience is like that. Okay. Right. Uh, it kind of depends what's happening in your life, what your mindset, what you're working on, you know, how you're feeling, you know what I mean? It, you have different experiences depending on what's going on in your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and everyone's different. Everyone, you know, so you can't predict it totally, which is why it's important to have preparation for it. Right. Have mental preparation, have physical, uh, uh, physical preparation for it, understand, have intention of going into it. Um, also very important to have integration afterwards. You know, have somebody help you uh, talk, you know, say, okay, what did you learn? What did you see? How do you think that affected? What did that mean to you? And help them integrate, integrate the experience, you know, into their, into their body and their mind. And um, so, yeah, so a lot of that is happening. I think that we should mandate that all politicians have to do that in order to stay politicians. <laughs> you know, it's really interesting. I didn't read this, but I heard it. Um, so I don't, I, I can't, I can't say it's for sure, but I, I really should. I have to investigate this. But um, but I was told, you know, somebody talking about this and discussion about it, and they said that AOC and Rick Perry both were proponents of making it legal. Wow. I know. <laughs> That's hard to believe them yeah, I know. be like, on the they, same page about yeah, something. Like, that was the joke, you know. <laughs> they could even these two could agree on this, right? Yeah. Right. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Well, I have to. Know, because when I heard it, I burst out laughing. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. If, um, if something's going to really benefit people, I think that that's where you should come together. You know, don't just take up one side of the, of the, uh, the bait and just do the opposite of what the other one's doing because they're, you know, Democrat or Republican. That's, that's ridiculous. Do something that's beneficial. That's what our politicians are supposed it's to be. Supposed to do. Help us. Yeah help us out you know come up with some kind of a an agreement and you know meet in the middle find something that can really help us out not just pick up you know and say oh well you're for this so i'm against it that's ridiculous right right so so i'm going to tell you about the uh, some various experiences i've had and the one i just had three weeks ago okay and then i wanted to show you some things that i was talking about i'll show you what i have uh, just to show your viewers a little bit and then i'll send information to you um, uh, before you go any further, I wanted to ask you, how did, uh, how did the seminar go in Dripping Springs? That's the one I want to tell you about. Oh, great, great. So, so first off, the, I've had various, uh, a lot of very, uh, several experiences with groups of people, mm -hmm. um, a couple in Spain and a couple here. So four altogether, including this one I had three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And then I've had a lot of experiences by myself, okay? Um, I'm not suggesting that other people do that. Uh, I was in a very safe situation inside. I was very careful. Um, I have a lot of practice uh, with my meditation. So I have more control over my thoughts and my brains, mm -hmm. uh, my, my brain <laughs> than most people do. And then the, the average person, I should say. And, um, and, so, and also I have a lot of study around this. I did a lot of research and talked to people and stuff before I even tried to do this, all right? And I did, I went into it with intention. I prepared myself. I wrote about it afterwards. The next day, I was very gentle with myself. I took care of myself. I rested, maybe went to yoga or swam if I wanted, slept a lot, wrote about it, thought about it, paid attention to my thoughts and how things were changing my, my feelings for two weeks afterwards, stuff like that. Okay. Right. So I'm very focused on the proper way to use it therapeutically. Okay. Um, but I don't advise people to do it by themselves and I help people. I help people go through it sometimes if they ever want to and, or if they want a bigger experience with the group that, you know, I can help direct them to people too. Um, this last one I went to uh, was very different for me. It was a bigger, it was a, it, there's a place uh, in Dripping Springs area that this man created this kind of like a little compound for this kind of thing. Okay. Oh, wow. for medicine therapy. And he has this beautiful big room and the doors, when the weather's nice, the doors all open around it. So you just have, you know, a roof. Unfortunately, it was a little cold, but I, I look forward to a time where I can experience it when the weather, you know, is nicer and you're just surrounded by nature under this roof. It's super cool. Uh, beautiful music and lights and the just environments, absolutely wonderful. Um, and then you have like these little, you know, places uh, you know one building housed like maybe 12 beds and the other ones had private beds and stuff like that real nice little places it's beautiful the way you set it up and it's like really advanced rainwater collection system and stuff so cool I mean it was really cool 
And then they had this little kitchen that was like out in the middle of all this too. It was an open kind of a kitchen with walls around it that everybody was community and everything. It was wow. so fire, yeah, everything. So in this experience, uh, this was the first time I had a whole two and a half days. I love the way they did it because it was like, you get there in the afternoon or early evening, Friday, you have a whole night to detach from the busyness and whatever you got going on in your life. And then you have a whole day to do it too, mm -hmm. you know, nature. And then the man that was in charge of it, uh, Danny, he was like, he would spend time with me and say, okay, what's, you know, what are your intentions? What are we, you know, what are you doing? What are you looking forward to it? And all that kind of stuff. And um, he walked around with me. And then I, you know, I read these readings that I wrote for two weeks beforehand. I was instructed to prepare for this, to write, answer questions every night. It was what they call a, a streaming, a, a, a stream consciousness uh, writing. And I was, I was instructed to answer, who am I? What could I release to heal? And how can I love myself better? And I was supposed to answer these questions every night uh, for 10 minutes, at least 10 minutes. And I would have something similar, but some things different, depending what happened that day and what I thought about, what, what experience I had or whatever, you know. And um, so I, it's like, to, the purpose was to clear your mind a lot to prepare you for a better experience, to receive more from the experience. And uh, it was interesting because uh, the time that I had, the day and a half almost before we actually did our first ceremony, I was rereading what I wrote. And there was a common little thread theme that I didn't realize I was writing over and over about it, uh, about how I wanted more emotional and physical contact with people because I had a marriage for 27 years with my family. And then the last four, I've been alone a lot. And uh, part of it was the experience in Spain and all this distancing and all that and my work at home and stuff like that. So still more than I like. And uh, but I thought that if that if that came to me, it would be kind of an internal healing, you know, within myself. Mm -hmm. But it ended up being with these people. Like I let them in, I asked them for help. And this is a, something that came, it became even more to my forefront of my brain that this is something that I needed to get better at. I knew it, but this was a very big, strong way of showing me. Right. You need to ask for help for, you know, emotional stuff sometimes, because I'm always so busy helping people, you know, and, and I let them in and it was a very, very healing experience for me. It was really, really wonderful. And that was unusual for me because usually I don't interact with people when I'm under the influence. So it was real new to me and uh, it was beautiful. The facilitators there were there to help me. And uh, we had, I had, you know, different conversations with, you know, four different people and they were very loving and helpful and uh, yeah, it was, it really helped me. That was this thing that I really loved. They say that the plant, the medicines know what you need. And yeah. um, so it was very interesting that I had written about this and it wasn't even my intention going into it. My intention was just to release blockages so I could, you know, get the things in my life that I want and be, you know, feel even better and more at peace and that kind of thing. And um, this is what I got. And it was a real... It was a real surprise to me, but it was beautiful. It was really wow. beautiful. It was very, very, a very, very strong, loving feeling of being belonging uh, and a family feeling and stuff like that, which I really needed. Yeah. So it made me really excited that I was more a part of the, their community now. And they're very, very knowledgeable, um, loving people, very compassionate that their whole mission is just to help people heal. And, wow. and yeah. What's uh, amazing about this part of Texas is the, the nature that we have around here. And one of the things that my wife take advantage of here is that we have creeks and rivers that are, I mean, they're, that's clean water. You go out there, you put your feet in the water. You're surrounded by these beautiful trees and all the animals and birds and things like that. And you're, you're able to ground yourself. And, uh, you know, uh, before I forget, I have to mention this, and I should have done this before, but uh, we are not doctors. Mm -hmm. And so um, this is just an alternative way of thinking. I 
strongly suggest that you, you speak to professionals before you do anything like this. Consider doing this because uh, once again, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I'm just, yeah. I, I'm always into alternative right. um, healing and, right. and in saying that, do your research, you yes. know, see on the, on YouTube and if you write documentaries and I'm going to show a, 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 um, a couple of groups, if you want to do more research and get more information, I share all kinds of videos and articles about a lot of doctors uh, and, uh, and people that are talking about this and they're using it with their patients and all, all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me share you a couple of things here. Sure. Um, so there's a Facebook group that I have called Mindful Metamorphosis. It's the same name as my company. Mm -hmm. And so I share all kinds of great stuff, modalities, um, information, inspirational stuff. Here I got I'm pinned at the top things, you know, how the stress hormone that we, the cortisol that we put in our body is now also linked to Alzheimer's because it's just too much for the brain and the body. Um, I share a lot of information from different people. This man here has a beautiful book called Inward. Um, talks a lot about self-love and healing through meditation. Joe Dispenza is fantastic, talking a lot about how you can learn how to control your thoughts. These are a lot of people I've studied under. Um, Gabor Mate, Brene Brown is amazing. Gabor Mate is another person who I really, really love. He's an advocate of this too, and he's all about healing trauma and stuff like that. So there's a lot of really great stuff. And a lot of the, the ones that I really love that are really helpful and educational, I pin to the top here, okay? So these two I just put up, they'll be pinned to the top two. So this is the hockey player I was telling you about, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, you know, Brian Gumble. he's pretty famous. And I forget the guy's name. Um, In a steamy... So this talks about his name is, I forget his name. Hence um, hallucinations. Carcillo was under his Carcillo, spell. that's his name. Daniel Carcillo, okay? And uh, so he's the, uh, he's the um, hockey player. Mm -hmm. that killed himself that I told you about and started his own business. And in this video, it, it interviews some other athletes too. They talk about how much it helped them. Okay. Uh, then I saw just recently, this is a very recent uh, interview on the Ellen show. So here's how far we've come. Okay. A year and a half ago, when I would try to talk to some people, they were like freaking out. All right. Right. Now we have, this is this, this, this episode on Ellen with Deepak Chopra, uh, uh, aired at the like two, not even two weeks ago and okay. if you watch it in the short interview I think it's maybe not even 10 minutes long or whatever about halfway through Ellen starts talking about you know there's a lot of people talking about psychedelics and how it's helping people and blah 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 blah, blah. and he says yes and he starts talking about it and everything so we're talking prime time you know HBO with Brian Gumble and and uh, you know Ellen Deepak Chopra now you know what I mean I mean it's everywhere everywhere and this right. is just blowing up in the last like year okay and, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's gonna spread to other countries it's we're just on the forefront um this another one this man is one of the main guys that talks in the documentary on netflix which i highly recommend called fantastic fungi this man has been studying all kinds of different mushrooms even non-psychedelics just for how it can help the environment because they they, they decompose and, and it's so fast and everything, you know, right. this guy is a huge, uh, this is a whole article on LinkedIn <laughs> about microdosing and his special protocol for it. And he mixes like vitamin B with it and microdosing is using, uh, he, he specifically, you can do microdosing with different substances, but this is specific for psilocybin mushrooms. And he includes lion's mane mushroom, which is not psychedelic, it's just for health reasons. And then um, in vitamin, uh, uh, vitamin B, niacin, all together for a protocol on microdosing to help people be calmer, less anxious, more creative, more focused. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's just everywhere. So I'm just seeing if I have anything else on it right now. No, that's about it. But there's a lot of really good inspirational stuff. This is the book Inward I was talking about. Excellent, excellent book. It's like a reflection book. This is the man that writes it. Um, I haven't heard him talk about it, but I'm sure he probably is an advocate of the same kind of thing. Um, so there's a lot of really great helpful information on this on this group, and it's Mindful Metamorphosis on Facebook. Um, and then here I have a meetup group, and recently you came to this event, um, and I'm going to have another yes. event. Seventy people signed up for this. Wow. Uh, I know, but uh, you know, seventy people came uh, signed up for it. Look at this, seventy-one. 
but like you saw, I think it was like 25 came. So obviously, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm probably going to do this on a regular basis because it just a lot of people really want to know about this. So what I did was I shared all kinds of resources with them afterwards. I, I told them, okay, here's a bunch of resources and it just links and links and links and links all this stuff. Blah, 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 mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, videos and all. And this one particularly is the same guy, Paul. He actually, in this video, he actually shares screens, like screenshots of here. This is incredible right here. He shares screenshots of all these different universities that are currently doing clinical trials on psilocybin and other substances. Oh, wow. All awesome. over the world. Big names. Okay. And here, these are actual clinical, also more actual research centers all over the world, equal to Johns Hopkins. Okay. Academic centers. Um, um, Do I see UT Health on there? Oh, I don't know. Um, Look at there, UT Hill. Yep. And um, so that's North American. Then he goes into, another, he talks, there's another slide. There's two, there's, there's another one here. This is around the world, European. So he showed the first slide is North American. The second slide is European, all over the world. Okay. Yeah. So it's a, you know, it's a resurgence. It's a, you know, it's a whole oof, coming back. Now, just so people know, in the late 40s, uh, there was a guy named Albert Hoffman, I think his name was, he's a, a scientist. He's the one that kind of discovered LSD. He, you know, a lot of the scientists experiment on themselves. And then he was like, holy cow, this thing, what the heck is this, you know? And he took more than he, you know, that he ever imagined that he didn't know. They didn't know the dosages then. Right. And after that, they started getting like really great results with LSD, with people with trauma and alcoholism and, and PTSD and stuff like that in a mm. setting where they were very controlled in the clinical setting, okay? And then right around the same time, you had the whole hippie movement. You had Timothy Leary, who, even though his intention was to help a lot of people, he was a little, the way he did it kind of hurt the scientific research. I can okay? imagine. And there's a guy named Roland, I forget his last name. He runs the clinic in Johns Hopkins. He talks about this a little bit. He's very careful in how he talks about it. I mean, Timothy Leary was well-intentioned, but you know, he made it a little easier for Nixon to say, oh, this is really bad. Right. And, uh, and so then fast forward into the whole movement of LSD was a part of that generation. So you can see this kind of information in documentaries that I share uh, um, uh, and I'll send some to you. Uh, and on that group, Mindful Metamorphosis, I share a lot of it. And then also there's a, there's a, there's a Netflix series called The Mind Explained. Mm -hmm. The last episode, there's like five episodes. The last episode is about psychedelics. And it talks all about that. It talks specifically about the politics and why it got lumped into these other, with these other drugs that just didn't deserve to be there. You know, they're totally different substances. They're not, your body does not react to them the same way. Right. Have, other, have people maybe done horrors, really stupid things like jumping out a window or something like that. Maybe I've never met a person that's done it, but okay, maybe that's happened, but it's not, it's because they weren't in a, they took too much and they just were irresponsible about doing it. You know what I mean? They didn't have someone to help them. And uh, I mean, I've taken strong doses. I've never wanted to jump out a window, but, <laughs> uh, but you know, it's just, it's taken out of context. Yeah. Um, and who knows if that's, I don't even know if that's real. Um, I mean, right around that same time, they made the movie Reefer Madness which I don't know if you've ever seen. I've, I've uh, kind of seen bits and pieces okay. of that one. It's like the guy smokes a little dope, but he jumps out the window. <laughs> yeah, know? we know that's not real. <laughs> what kind of, what kind of weed is that guy? Uh, you know, uh, but so yeah, it's just, if you educate yourself, you'll see what I'm saying. And uh, if you're interested, if anyone on here is interested in getting on the meetup group or, or, or contacting me and finding out, you don't have to be on meetup. If you're interested, I can send you a Zoom link and tell you what date we're going to have a conversation about it again. Um, and I we share all kinds of resources, information, and on the Mindful Metamorphosis group, you know, I share stuff all the uh, not all the time. I sprinkle it with a lot of the different things, but I share it there too. But if you you know you, if you go to the meetup, you'll see all kinds of links. But if you're not on meetup, you can contact me, and I'll be happy to talk to anybody because I know that you know. It's not for everybody, but a lot of people are very interested. All ages now. All and we will, 
we'll definitely put the links in the description so people will know how to contact you. And uh, I wanted to say something else and you could make an educated assumption uh, when it comes to micro dosing. It's just like with say wine, wine has a lot of health benefits to it, but it's also in moderation. If you overdo it, just like anything else, of course, it's not going to work the way it's supposed to. So, nice. you know, I would definitely get into researching this, talk to people that are, they know what they're doing. Don't go out there just to have a drug trip, go yeah. out there to, to you know. To, yeah, this, stuff, this stuff is strong stuff. You yeah. don't want to play, it's not to play with. Have respect for it. You know, like I was talking about the indigenous culture, they have mm -hmm. a lot of respect for it. Um, and just so people understand, microdosing is, Kind of like a like a supplement regimen, right? Uh, and it, it it's very small dose. You're not you're not you know seeing anything. And, and by the way, not every experience you have you will hallucinate. Not they're not. Uh, they're, I I actually do a lot of emotional stuff more than hallucinating myself. Um, and what kind of everyone's different. What kind of mushrooms you do? What kind of substance? Whatever. It's all different. Right. But microdosing, you don't experience any of that. You're not experiencing any kind of sensation that's any different other than it helps people with anxiety. It helps people with brain fog. It helps people with being just being able to focus clear, um, being more creative. And it's not just mushrooms. There's a lot of different substances. I mean, Silicon Valley giants uh, have put millions of money, millions of dollars into research for DMT which is another substance for this exact reason for a creative, you know, thing in moderation, it, it lights up your brain. I mean, you can see, I wish I would have had this and I shared it with you and had it ready. But if you look, if you type in maybe the differences in your brain on psychedelics. Okay. Mm -hmm. And look at images or, or pick up articles or whatever. And you will see, like, I've seen like, you know, two brains or like they'll show like a, a graphic representation. There's like this circle here and a circle here. And this circle on the left is your normal brain. And it'll show like connections, neuron connections, like talking to each other and stuff. And it'll, it'll be represented by these colored lines. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you'll see, you know, a lot of white space and you'll see these kind of various lines here and there. Okay. And then when it shows you on psychedelics, you've got lines, it's all colored like this. I mean, the whole wow. thing is like lit up. And if you, you can see on video, I'm sure on YouTube and pictures and what it does, it just makes your brain like, boom, like totally wake up and be just talk to each other easier. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's uh, quite a variety of benefits. That so uh, do you ever get out to Marble Falls? Not usually, but I could. Uh, well, anyway, there's a, a witchy shop there and shop. <laughs> yeah well that's that's what i call it uh, you know you have uh groups of witches all over the okay. state of texas and they'll have little shops you can go in and you buy your tarot cards and you okay. know uh different candles and all these things I, I don't judge anybody if that's what you believe that's what you believe right. um but she's also i guess you call it a herbalist yeah. where um you know Here's she's what's going on yeah they have a legal form of peyote. Mm -hmm. um, and mind you, I, I have asthma, so I don't smoke anything. But she said, I, I promise you will not have an asthma attack when you do this. Now, once again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to tell no. anybody to do this, but I tried it. And you do not hallucinate or anything like that. It's nothing like that. But you get so relaxed. Mm -hmm. And you're able to to sleep better and things like that. And I mean, granted, it's a little far of a drive from here, but um, oh, no, you'll have to give me the name of it in the offline, and I'll I'll check it out. I'll have um, to see if I can remember what it's called. But uh, I yeah, tried to have her on the show so she could yeah, kind of explain these things. I would love to hear that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's really interesting how we've been programmed and how mm -hmm. we've been trained to be okay with these synthetic drugs because people with white jackets are giving them to us <laughs> or, and then things that are available in nature that people, indigenous tribes and people have been using for thousands of years that come from nature with no synthetic at all. And, you know, we've been programmed. Oh, that's bad. You know what I mean? But the, look at how many synthetic drugs are out there that are causing more harm yes. than good. Yes. That's what I'm saying. 
So yeah, yeah. It's, and, it's, and for anybody, just to kind of uh, say real quick, on my my links on the bottom, uh, you know, to how you can contact me. Um, I'm really a big proponent of you know sound therapy, breath work. I I you know we're, we're made of everything's energy, vibrational healing from uh, actual physical pain uh, uh, that will help relieve you from that calm you like you would not believe how much how how calming it is and we all need this kind of stuff more because of the way we're living mm -hmm. we're, living in, we're not living in nature we're busy we're around screens our, our bodies and brain they're not made for this okay and that's why they're screaming at us and so mm -hmm. these others a lot of these modalities really help any kind of help anybody needs on meditation if you're interested in that i can help you mindfulness techniques all this stuff is so helpful for how people are feeling I, I, I talk to people regularly and everybody's having problems with this. Okay. Everybody, yes. it, you know, they're not, maybe not talking about it. Some people are having some more severe problems than others because people are just more sensitive than others. But if you talk to anybody, most everybody you talk to will tell you that they have a hard time calming their mind. Yep. They have a hard time turning their brain off. They're having a hard time with anxiety or sleeping or whatever. Okay. It's, mm -hmm. it's an epidemic. It's a total epidemic. And uh, so there's so many things that are out there that you can learn to do, you know, and events that you can learn from other people and meet them. And a lot of it's here right in Austin, you know, and I've, I've sought these, I've sought these events out and I found them. So, and I'm always looking for new events and new people to meet. So if anybody here, you know, listening wants to know that stuff, please contact me. I'll help you. I'll set you in the right direction. Oh. The better part of the last 15 years of my life, I, I've had so much trouble sleeping. And I've, you know what? I'm going to tell you what you go to the doctor and they'll give you a, a sleeping pill. And it works good for a while. But then, like everything else, your body gets used to it and it doesn't work. So they switch you to another one. And before you know it, you're switched to another one. Well, I'm on Tamazepam, which is about the strongest that you can get as far as a sleep aid. And it's, got to where it's not working as well anymore so if there is something else out there that can help and i'm one of those that my brain doesn't want to shut off okay. now, i might be able to get to sleep but in the middle of the night usually about two or three o'clock in the morning i wake up and then my brain's going 90 to nothing can't get back to sleep and it, it is physically emotionally just draining on a person yeah. Function. I, 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 when I had occasionally, if I have a couple of nights like that, it's unusual for me. Mm -hmm. Usually I can go right back to sleep, but I wake up and oh, I must be dreaming something or whatever. Even if I have a couple of nights like that, I can see the effect on me during the day. I, mm -hmm. I, I I'll, I'll tend to be, I could be maybe a little depressed. You know what I mean? If I'm not getting enough sleep, that's a big side effect. Like you feel depressed and no, okay, I'm gonna go to the doctor and get a, a pill for that. You know what I'm saying? That, it's a never ending cycle. <laughs> You exactly. got you to gotta take a pill for this. Well, it's causing this. So you have to take this pill. I mean, just, you know, I mean, like all the, the all the modalities I said, sound therapy, breath work, breathing, learning to breathe deeply. I mean, we are in, in your nervous system. You have the parasympathetic system and the sympathetic system. The sympathetic is fight or flight. The mm -hmm. parasympathetic is rest and restore. You are in one or the other all the time. Okay. It's either... Right fight or fight, stress hormones, really stressed out or rest and restore and your body's good. If you're in the, the Paris, if you're in the sympathetic flight or fight a, a lot, what happens when you're trying to sleep, when you're in bed and you're stressing out, you're like, I got to sleep. I got to sleep, but I can't. Oh yeah. And so you're stressing out. You're putting all these stress hormones into your body and your body thinks you're in danger. And it says, no way, Kyle, we're not sleeping. You're in danger. I can't let you sleep. And that's what's mm -hmm. happening. So with the other things, and you have kind of a regular practice with meditation and, you know, it doesn't have to be really long, just consistent, more consistent, learn to breathe deeper, take pauses throughout the day. It takes practice to get this new way. Yeah, it of does. And you forget, and then you go, oh, I know. And then you see the benefit. Oh yeah, that really helped. And then you forget again, <laughs> but soon you start to develop the habit and you see that it really helps you. And um, just those things alone, breathing and meditation help a lot, but also it starts, you start to notice your thoughts and you can look at your thoughts. You can't control the thoughts that come into your mind, but you can start to control what you do with them. Question them. Don't just believe everything and react. That's how we, most of us act. Yes. 
or suffer a lot for it to kind of question it and go okay then no that's not true i don't need to think that and you just start to notice it a little bit more okay and you get better at it and then also the kind of routines you have in the morning and at night that changes your world okay if you're on your phone close to going to bed or on a screen or anything like that or listening to something that's negative or stressful or watching a crazy series or movie that's violent or whatever that a lot of us do. And then you go to bed and that's the last time thing, thing that you put in your mind. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I know uh, exactly what you're saying. <laughs> or if you wake up and the immediate thing you do is you start checking your emails, start checking everything or whatever. Those two routines, just that right there will make a huge difference and how well you sleep and anxiety and depression. Mm. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm curious as to if uh, people would be interested in maybe joining in on a discussion on our, our Facebook, if you'd be willing, maybe we could do a live one evening yeah. or, or on YouTube. Yeah. 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 Anytime. Um, just to, you know, have people chime in and, and either give their opinion or ask questions. Yeah. So um, if, wow. if anyone's, if we can get people to uh, to to message me, uh, you can either leave a comment or you can email me. I always put the email address in the description or contact uh, Michelle. Uh, let us know if you'd like to do that, and maybe we could all decide on a, a good evening and and uh, and do this because I, I think more people need to hear this. Yeah, I've done a lot of this. There's so much out there that you have in your control. The problem is, is a lot of doctors aren't talking about it. And you know, there's good doctors and there's doctors that are just in for the money, I know. And, 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 and thank goodness for YouTube and these, you know, this, the, these kind of things, you know, talking YouTube has really helped us get information from a lot of reputable medical scientists, neuroscientists and everything telling us this stuff. Um, and, you know, whatever you watch on good television or whatever, good programs. Uh, Gaia is a really great platform, kind of like a Netflix for this stuff. It's really, really wonderful. A lot of positive, great stuff. And uh, the, the medical industry isn't embracing this. They're not, this stuff is, this information has been out for years, okay? Like, like close to two decades. And they're still not teaching it in medical schools here or abroad, okay? That's, that's a shame. It's, it's, it's a crime. And it is. It's totally criminal because they will lose billions of dollars. So they're not embracing it and they're not talking about it. And Dr. Gabor Mate, uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about this, Bruce Lipton, a lot of these guys that are on the forefront talking about all this stuff, they readily say, yeah, they're not going to, the medical industry is not embracing it because they're not going to make a lot of money on it. That's the problem. Money is the bottom line when it comes to anything. And, you know, I'm, I'm all about positivity. And I'm, you know, if you are happy with yourself, then more power to you. But something else, this whole body positivity movement where, you know, you've got overweight people or like, you know, oh, look how big I am. I'm proud of myself. Hey, if you're comfortable with yourself, that's great. I'm, I'm happy for you. But listen to what I'm saying as somebody who used to be overweight, the benefits of taking care of yourself and doing things naturally like not going and getting these crazy surgeries and taking all these diet pills and things like that i mean there are some beneficial surgeries don't get me wrong right, right. but you know do do things more natural once you start to lose this weight you'll see you're you're better in, in yeah. your state of mind in your body um i, I told you about my my diabetes and in the high blood pressure and all those things that that goes down and you're you're prolonging your life yeah. uh, one of the you know one of the things one of the things that they're not really telling people when it comes to like this pandemic is a lot of people that are dying from covid have these or they're overweight and they have oh, these health been uh, or the, these health problems yeah. That's the benefit of taking care of yourself. Right. Now, you can get it off better. Exactly. So, you know, I'm 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 glad people are are becoming more uh, confident in themselves and and pleased with themselves. That's very important. But taking care of yourself, not just to look good, yeah. but the health benefits. You know, and just something so simple as walking. You know, exactly. We're very, we're very extreme in our thinking. Uh, in our country where and everything has to be black and white 
Mm -hmm. I have to actually work out really, really, really hard all the time or don't do anything. <laughs> and, you know, all you have to do, walking is a very underrated exercise. 20 and or 30 minutes. That's it. You know, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, whatever. Even if you can't do it every day, four or five times a week, whatever. Get off your screen and, you know, and get out of your office and go walking around and then do stretches and stuff like that. It's amazing how much it'll help. You feel better, move the blood around and all that. But your back and your neck, all of these things are like really suffering if you're just sitting around. Our body mm -hmm. is not meant to be stationary. We're meant to move, but we're not meant to run for marathons and stuff like that either. OK, that's true. I mean, you know, just getting out, moving around more. And when I, I tell you, when I lived abroad, you know, our, our country is all centered around the car. It was built up around the car. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have like a lot of bike friendly you know, cities and uh, unless or, you're in Austin, exactly, or metro, <laughs> or metro, good metro, a fast speed metro all over the country or whatever. The Europeans and Japan, other countries, they do. Okay, they also don't eat hardly any processed food like we do. If mm -hmm. we, go, we now we can go with Americans and you just see aisles and aisles, like it's a ridiculous amount of options of all these processed foods you can get in the grocery store. Right? It's insane. Okay. When you go live in another country, they don't have that. They hardly That's have, awesome. If they have a little processed food. It's like a little bit. And they walk all the bike and walk and use Metro all the time. Yes, there's cars, but that's the biggest difference. Europeans actually smoke more than we do, but they got less problems because of the other stuff. Wow. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I also say if you can get make your little vegetable garden. You know, grow you a few tomatoes and onions and peppers and things. And uh, I mean, I love mine. And I, I, I can't wait till I can have a garden again. I haven't oh. had one in a while. But that's another example. The the produce in when I was living in Spain, mm -hmm. it's all close to people. Here, a lot of times the produce is being shipped. It loses a lot of its, you know, its, it's the a, nutritional value. And, and what a lot of Americans don't know, because of what's used in our dairy and in our meat, these things, a lot of these things in Canada and a lot of European countries have been outlawed. Yeah. They're not allowed to use these things on the food products like we still do in America. So we're basically poisoning ourselves and they and, and they won't allow meat or dairy products from the United States into their countries, period. They won't That's even right. allow them. Do you yeah. know that uh, there's a lot of countries that yogurt's against the law? Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yogurt is really not good for you. Yeah. You know, we are all, we've been programmed to think, oh, yogurt's got so many benefits. Um, there's a lot of countries that won't allow uh, oh, yogurt. We've been, one of our biggest prep, one of the biggest propaganda campaigns we had growing up was that milk and dairy was good for you. OK, and the milk and dairy, the meat and dairy council when we were kids in school. OK, remember, you had the four food groups and it was always in the school that was put into the school. Yep. It was propaganda. Milk is not necessary. We are the only animals in the world that drink another animal's milk. And we're the only animal that will drink milk past the time we're weaned. Okay. We do not need milk, but you know, everybody, we grew up drinking milk all the time, you know, all the time growing up. And then remember years ago, I think it was in the nineties that it was starting to change and people were getting more educated. Like I don't need milk for calcium. I can get it other ways. And why should right. I, you know, and I'm lactose, all these people lactose intolerant. It's because you're not meant to need it. And, and then all of a sudden we had the dairy council do the got milk campaign. Mm -hmm. Remember? Yes, so I do. Successful, very good campaign. All these famous, beautiful people with the milk mustaches and everything. Okay. It was really big, but I remember when it happened, I started laughing. I was actually vegetarian at the time. And I said, ah, interesting. They're hurting. They actually have to pay for a campaign now for the first time before they got it free and it right into the school system. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I, irregardless, I'm not giving up my cheese for nothing. Oh, no. I, <laughs> I'm not talking. I'm not. I, I, I have gone in spurts in time in my life where I've been real extreme about stuff. No, I'm not. I eat really good most of the time. And if I want to have cheese, or I want to have pizza. If I want to have some kind of you know, unhealthy thing or something like that. I have it. It's no big deal because I don't eat like that all the time. And then my body's like, mm, let's go back to normal again. You know I, what I mean? Personally, I think Whataburger should be part of the food uh, triangle, exactly. but I hate Whataburger. Oh, oh, don't say that. 
I'll have a good hamburger once in a while, but what a bigger is like, ah, you know, I don't like fast food stuff at all. <laughs> I don't like how it tastes. Maybe I mean, I grew up with it. I mean, I, I had, when I was younger, I weighed about 30 pounds more than I am now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it was because of sedentary party, fast food all the time, processed food, you know? So at 18, I was like, oh my God, what happened? And then I started eating, that was when I first started eating good and training and exercising. And then, you know, wow. I got you but, know, I, I weigh the same now as I did when I was 11 years old. <laughs> That's how big I was back then. Wow. See, I was thin when I was a kid and then I got bigger and then I lost it. So I weigh actually 30 pounds less now than I did when I was 18. Wow. Well, you know, you take care of yourself, eat right. Uh, let me tell you something else. You know, I, I have to have sugar-free stuff if I'm going to have anything that's sweet. And one of my downfalls is I, I like Dr. Pepper's zero, but, um, for the last, uh, what week or so I've just really cut it out of my diet altogether and been drinking more water and, and tea and uh, tea is a staple here in Texas. So say what you want. Uh, but anyway, uh, I've started losing weight again yep. and it's all because I gave up that junk. Yep. The carb, you got to watch the tea too, because some of the sweet tea has got a ton of sugar in it. I don't drink sweet tea though. Good. Uh, yeah, the, the carbon, I, I rarely, I mean, I used to, but I rarely, really, it's so rare now for me to have Coke or some kind of soda combination thing. Yeah. And once in a great while when I have it, it and my body's so unused to it. I'm like burping all the time. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Like afterwards, because it's not natural. Your body's like, what is this carbonation bubbles? What are you doing? You know? Yeah, you don't need it. There's, and you know what? If you want something sweet that's um, natural, I, I recommend you use monk fruit. Yeah, that's good. That is sweeter than sugar. Yeah, I, I, I mean, the thing is, that, you know, moderation, like you said. Moderation, yes. Okay. If you want to, you know, when you do, if you love something so much, and then you deprive yourself from it. Then you're more likely to binge it. Okay. That's what happens with diets. Okay. Mm -hmm. You deprive, 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 and then you go crazy and eat the whole box. Okay. So if you just give yourself a little, you know, treat once in a while, then you can move on and keep on eating healthy. And then, you know, like I said, I, I, I and just don't buy the stuff and bring it home all the time or just, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's the huge thing right there. Just, you know, splurge a little bit when you go out and just, you know, in, if you have control, you can have it at home. But if you don't, don't bring it home. <laughs> yeah. One of my problems was I used to sit there and I could eat a bag of M and M's. I could right. eat a whole bag of chips and all that I stuff. And I, yeah. I, you know, of course, I'll have to have some kind of sugar around in case my my sugar drops because that's another side effect of taking those pills is my sugar will get real low, or if I don't eat enough. But you know, a little handful every once in a blue oh, moon. Yeah. It's it it gives you yeah. satisfaction yeah. and you can and you, you get to the, yeah I mean when you get to the point where you're eating it much less mm -hmm. your body doesn't need like like I mean I used to years ago I used to like sweets more and stuff like that but now I, I mean I, if I get like with those big cookies I can never eat a whole no I I take like maybe a third of it and that's it that's all I need I don't ever like to have dessert on my own I'm never gonna finish it. All I need is a few bites and I'm done. It satisfies my palate. I've had my little sweet, I'm good. Because I don't eat it on a regular basis. If you don't eat it on a regular basis, you don't crave it usually, you know what I mean? But I'm a big fan of if you get this craving for something and you haven't had it for a while, go have it. It's okay, it. you know, treat yourself, oh, yeah. do it and then just go on and get, you know, eat healthier again. Well, that's how you I know, do. If I stay strict to my diet for a couple of weeks, and then we'll go out and maybe I'll splurge on pizzas. Craig goes, by the way, um, you know, I'll have a couple of pieces of pizza and I'm thinking, oh, my God, I hate to see what I, my, I'm going to look like when I step on the scale. I'll actually drop a couple of pounds. Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing how that works. But yeah, don't even worry about it. Just take care, pay attention to your body and take care of itself. You know, That's I, right. I'm not like the obsessive, you know, one way or another. Moderation. Well, I, I thank you, Michelle, for coming on again, and I hope we can pick up this conversation again in another day. And I'm I'm looking forward to actually meeting up with you in person since we yeah. live in the same town. 
<laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, we and, can do that for sure. Well, I appreciate everybody that also listens and watches us. Uh, yes. If this is your first time to the channel, uh, I'm glad you stopped by. I hope you'll come back and please subscribe. If you're regular to the channel, thank you for your support. And I, I hope that you benefit from people like Michelle here. Uh, please send me all your links so I can add that to the description and come back. And let's see if we can do a live show. Let, let me know what you think, people. Let me know if you like want to do that. We'll set it up. Okay. All right. Thanks, Kyle. All Have right. Until the next one, take care. Bye. God okay. bless and peace. All right. Take care. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network.